Welcome to the Chic Assignment Check-In for March. Hi everyone, Jennifer here, and welcome to the Chic Assignment Check-In for March here on The Daily Connoisseur. You are going to see some names scrolling down below. This is one of the upper tiers in the Chic Society, and the Chic Society is bringing us the Chic Assignment. So what do we do in the Chic Society? It's the private membership group here on YouTube. We have so much fun. I do a vodcast once a week, and we also go live once a month. And this month was really fun in particular. Ben and I went on on a vodcast this month, and we talked about the whole Harry and Meghan on Oprah situation that everybody was asking me about. We also went live this month on Zoom and got to see each other. We have so much fun there. So membership is only $1.99 a month. You join right here on YouTube. There's a little join button down below that you can press, or you can click on the link in the description box. I love the Chic Society and I appreciate you so much. Thank you for supporting this channel and for bringing us the Chic Assignment check-in. So the names you're seeing are the Chic Connoisseurs. There are also some upper tiers and these are the names here. At the end of the video, I'm going to be mentioning the Elegant Connoisseurs. A lot of them have amazing businesses or they're artists and they have a lot to share with you. So I do encourage you to stay till the very end. So thank you so much. All right, we are going to get into this month. And this is one of my favorite months we've ever done. I enjoyed learning about Clara Schumann so much. I can't wait to share her 10 interesting facts with you. And also Christina Rossetti. And this is what I love about the Chic Assignment. I am vaguely familiar with all of these artists. You know, I'll read a Christina Rossetti poem here and there, but it really makes it so much more enriching when you know about the artist's life, when you have studied them, and then you in depth go do a little deep dive with their artwork or their poetry. It just really, I love it. So I hope that you do too. And we're gonna start off with chic assignment number one, which is to explore the music of composer Clara Schumann. So I had assigned the Piano Concerto in A minor, Opus 7, Allegro Maestro, performed by Isata Kane Mason. I hope you enjoyed that performance. It was really passionate and beautiful. So we're going to dive into Clara Schumann's biography right now. I'm going to be reading to you from a classic FM article, which I will leave linked down below. 10 interesting facts about Clara Schumann. So here we go. And before I read those facts, she was born uh, September 13th, 1819 in Leipzig, Germany, and she died May 20th, 1896 in Frankfurt, Germany. Number one, Clara Schumann, born Clara Weick, is considered one of the most talented and distinguished composer pianists of the Romantic era. Fact number two, she was a child prodigy. Starting young, she was a child prodigy. Her father made her practice for two hours a day alongside her daily piano, violin, singing, theory, harmony, composition, and counterpoint lessons. Fact number three, music ran in the family. Her father, Frederick Weick, was a famous German piano teacher. It was thanks to him that Clara studied music from such a young age. Fact number four, she was a trendsetter who played from memory. At the tender age of 13, Clara was one of the first pianists to perform from memory. This has now become standard practice for most professional pianists. Fact number five, she was married to Robert Schumann. She met composer Robert Schumann when she was only eight years old. Their friendship eventually blossomed into love, although Clara's father was against the relationship and even threatened to shoot Robert should he go through with the marriage. Interesting fact number six, there was a love triangle. Johannes Brahms was in love with Clara, but she was married to his best friend. Robert Schumann's mental health deteriorated later in life, and he attempted to commit suicide before he was then admitted to an asylum. When this happened, Brahms came to stay at their home to support the family. Clara and Brahms's relationship blossomed to more than friendship, and although it's unclear exactly what went on, this love triangle holds a position as one of the most retold love stories in music history. Brahms wrote to her declaring his feelings, I wish I could write to you as tenderly as I love you and tell you all the good things I wish you. Interesting fact number seven, she premiered the work of Brahms. Clara had a complicated personal relationship with Johannes Brahms, but he was always supportive of her professional career. She was in fact the first person to ever publicly perform any of his work, Brahms. 
specifically the Andante and Scherzo from the Sonata in F minor in Leipzig on the 23rd of October in 1854. Interesting fact number eight, she was the breadwinner. She earned most of the money in the Schumann household, which was extremely unusual for the time. Clara's work has often been marginalized by people claiming her husband was the real composer behind her works. The couple worked together on some songs, but her pieces were in fact more popular than his at the time. Don't you just love that when they try to take credit away from the woman? So unfair. Okay, interesting fact number nine. She had an early end to composing. Clara stopped composing at the young age of 36. In later life, she said, I once believed that I possessed creative talent, but I have given up this idea. A woman must not desire to compose. There has never yet been one able to do it. Should I expect to be the one? And I think that's obviously a very sad mentality and uh, it's understandable given the time period. Women didn't feel empowered to uh, work or create or uh, be seen on the same level as men as far as artistic genius. So I wish that she had uh, ignored that limitation she put upon herself. And interesting fact number 10, there have been on-screen depictions of Clara Schumann. There have been many depictions of her on screen. Most famously, Katherine Hepburn played the composer in the 1947 film Song of Love, and I have not seen that film. So those are some very interesting facts. I really want to know more about her biography now. I'm interested in more details regarding the love triangle between her and Johannes Brahms and Robert Schumann and what happened with him and his health. So I feel compelled to learn more, but I certainly hope you enjoyed these 10 interesting facts on Clara Schumann. All right, moving right along, we are now going to study poet Christina Rossetti, who had a very interesting life as well. I have a very short biography of hers to read to you, and I'm also going to be reading one of her poems called when I am dead, my dearest. So let's begin with her biography. This is from interestingliterature.com and I will leave it linked down below. Christina Rossetti, born 1830 and died in 1894, was one of the Victorian era's greatest and most influential poets, along with Alfred Lord Tennyson, Robert Browning, and Algernon Charles Swinburne. Rossetti was the younger sister by two years of the pre-Raphaelite artist and poet Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Christina Rossetti was born in London in 1830 and lived with her mother virtually all of her life. She never married. Next to a biography of her brother Dante Gabriel, the biography of Christina Rossetti can seem tame by comparison, but her work is curious and idiosyncratic and raises interesting questions about how much it reflects her own life and her own beliefs. In terms of beliefs, Christina was high church rather than low and was heavily influenced by the Oxford movement of the 1840s. Many of her poems engage with the issue of religious belief, such as Good Friday, a poem about honest religious doubt as much as faith, and Twice, about the importance of Christian forgiveness and redemption. The poem is spoken by a fallen woman, a theme that can also be seen in Goblin Market. Christina Rossetti composed her first poem while still a very young girl. She dictated it to her mother. It ran simply, Cecilia never went to school without her gladiator. I want to break here and, and say that a lot of these artists we study, as in even Clara Schumann, Christina Rossetti, a lot of them from the past, they display hints about their genius when they are children. So parents, pay attention to your children. Do they like to write poetry? Do they like to compose music or practice the piano or whatever they like to do? Pay attention to that and foster it. I think that it's really interesting that most of these artists display this as young children. It's often claimed that Rossetti's first volume of poems was Goblin Market and Other Poems, which appeared in 1862 when Rossetti was in her early 30s. This is only partly true. Christina Rossetti had in fact a volume of her poems, titled simply Verses, privately printed in 1847, though it attracted little attention. Goblin Market and Other Poems was the first collection of her poetry to be published rather than printed, and it was the book that brought her to public attention. The title poem is a long narrative work which is often taken for a children's poem because of its fairy tale motifs and imagery. Rossetti, however, always denied that the poem was intended for children. Goblin Market and Other Poems also reveals what a remarkably precocious poet Rossetti was. Several of the poems in the volume, such as Remember and When I Am Dead, My Dearest, which we're going to read later, were composed before she had turned 20. Rossetti's influences were as diverse as the many poetic forms in which she wrote. Sonnets, ballads, narrative poems, lyrics, even Christmas carols in the bleak midwinter to name but the most famous. 
She was remarkably prolific. Her complete poems from Penguin Classics runs to well over 1,000 pages and is a treasure trove for the poetry lover. She took her influences from everyone, from the King James Bible to the metaphysical poets to the romantics, but there is something distinctive about her poetry. In her best work, you can tell you're reading a Christina Rossetti poem. Christina Rossetti died in 1894 from breast cancer, although for the last two decades of her life, she had suffered from Graves' disease. She was buried in Highgate Cemetery where fellow Victorian writer George Eliot had earlier been laid to rest. Rossetti herself went on to influence a range of later poets, including Gerard Manley Hopkins, Ford Maddox Ford, and Elizabeth Jennings. Philip Larkin was an admirer, praising her steely stoicism. Her legacy is found in surprising places. Not every carol singer is aware that In the Bleak Midwinter is based on a poem by Rossetti. It was originally titled A Christmas Carol. And that is the biography of Christina Rossetti. So I found it very interesting. She never married, but she had such a very prolific um, work of poetry. She didn't really seem to have any scandal either in her life, which is very unusual <laughs> from the artists that we like to study. So let's read When I Am Dead, My Dearest by Christina Rossetti. Remember, she wrote this before she was 20, so she had a bit of a morbidity about her. She was thinking about her death. When I am dead, my dearest, sing no sad songs for me. Plant thou no roses at my head, nor shady cypress tree. Be the green grass above me, with showers and dewdrops wet. And if thou wilt, remember, and if thou wilt, forget. I shall not see the shadows, I shall not feel the rain. I shall not hear the nightingale sing on as if in pain and dreaming through the twilight that doth not rise nor set, haply I may remember and haply may forget. So of course there's so much more to explore here. I will leave some of Christina Rossetti's poetry volumes down below if you wish to check her out even further. I really enjoyed learning about these two remarkable women. Okay, chic assignment number three was to work on the seasonal transition of your wardrobe. And I hope that you saw my video earlier in the month where I shared five transitional pieces from my 10 item wardrobe for spring. So I have a few new pieces coming in this year because of everything that's gone on with me in the intermittent fasting. And things are taking a while, so they haven't even arrived yet. But in the meantime, I've really enjoyed transitioning some of my fall winter things into spring items. And so, I will leave that video in the iCards up above. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that you check it out. And chic assignment number four was to organize or declutter one cabinet that is driving you nuts. And sometimes all it takes is that momentum of just opening up one cabinet and getting it back in order again that can help you to feel better. You know, it's just, there's something about clearing clutter. So we did the Mega March Motivation this month on the channel and that was the collaboration I did with Dawn from The Minimal Mom. And I hope that that gave you motivation in clearing out the clutter in your own home. And now I'm going to give the elegant connoisseur mentions. Amanda Dykes, author of award-winning fiction, written to light the dark and lift your heart. Amy Floor from Azalea Spa Goods, handcrafted aromatherapy body oils. Brandy Still, silhouette artist, keeping alive the art of silhouette portraiture that dates back from 1700s France. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop, offering colorful literary wall art and book-themed gifts to inspire every woman to be the heroine of her life. Dressed for My Day with Kay Harms encourages women 40-plus to care for and dress their bodies in a way that helps us influence our world positively and with grace. Elaine Brisebois is a certified nutritionist and women's weight loss coach. Download her elegant eating handbook, Simple and Effective Strategies for Permanently Living at Your Natural Weight, to get started. Ashley Buffa from Freedom Moms. Learning to treat chores as a family team is the key to creating and maintaining a tidy, organized home, and it's attainable through the Freedom Moms Smart Kid Chore System. Inspired by Nikki, YouTube channel, and Etsy shop. Nikki creates beautiful aprons, stationery, and so much more. Julie Coleman from My Confident Closet. Julie helps you build a seasonal wardrobe that fits your style and budget. Katie Rose, artist. Her collection, Good Tidings, is inspired by landscapes around our globe in this time of strengthening through struggle. Her original paintings can be found at katierosecollection.com. Lindy Sellers, Diary of Domesticity YouTube channel. Traditional homemaking for the modern woman. Leslie Morris from Gather and Grow. Wellness options to have in your home. Creating a toxin-free home. Tips for increasing energy levels. 
and CBD education. Nicole Brignol, founder of Lovely Bits Organic Intimate Care for Women. Rosenda Valenzuela from Little Pink Casa YouTube channel, inspiring ladies in vintage homemaking, elegant lifestyle, feminine wardrobe, and romantic home. Mrs. Shockley from A Home for Elegance. She has just started the most beautiful online dress boutique. Visit her at ahomeforelegance.com. Sarah Morgan Wellness. Sarah is a wellness coach for women specializing in helping busy women, especially moms, find manageable ways to meet their own health and wellness needs without the guilt so they can feel more balanced and fulfilled. Learn more at sarahmorganwellness.com. S.E. Sprocker, author of Chewy Marmot. When a mysterious cloud rolls over Marmton, a young marmot unwittingly becomes the keeper of fennel, the oddball otter who has the only key to saving their world. Available now on Amazon and free with Kindle Unlimited. Tina Hugal from OutSchool. Tina teaches history through biographies for ages 8 to 16. Michelle Rohr from the Secret Owl Society, digital planners and e-courses on how to create passive income from your own planning business. Learn more at secretowlsociety.org. Alan's Scottish Shortbread uses their Scottish grandmother's heirloom family recipe to bake small batches of buttery shortbread that pairs perfectly with a pot of tea. Learn more at alanscottishshortbread.com. Stern Brothers Jewelry is a family-owned, custom-designed jewelry store specializing in making heirloom jewelry into something special for the next generation generation to cherish. Something to cherish. Beautiful and meaningful products that promote the celebration and gift of life based off of the watercolor designs of artist Cherish Flyter. V-Cell Victoria, your Jaffra Beauty Consultant, featuring beautiful products such as Royal Jelly Skincare Rituals, Royal Almond Body Oils and Lotions, as well as Sumptuous Color. Special offers every month. And thank you to the following. Catherine Ray, Carly Tom from Living in Loveliness, Carolyn Haydu, Denise John, Guy Blaze, Jen Carlson, Jet Rally Heron, Joy Musunuri, Gina K. Henry, Heather Barrera, Jenny Candelaria, Linda Eckloff, Marie Caudill, Maria Condor, Prudently at Home, and Tiffany Hess. Thank you so much to the Elegant Connoisseurs and the whole Chic Society for bringing us the Chic Assignment check-in. I hope you enjoyed this month's Chic Assignment. Don't forget to keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!